Tonight, a leaked letter suggests more than half a million Scots could soon be living under the toughest level of COVID restrictions. Level four, this business won't be open again. The letter also says there's concern about rising rates in Dundee. The Scottish Government and Council say no final decision has been made. But there have been some promising noises today about a vaccine. Also tonight, will students be allowed home for Christmas? Now, we heard from our reporter, Katie Hunter, earlier, and she's with me now. Katie, good news seems to be in short supply at the moment, doesn't it? But it feels like we got some promising news today about a vaccine, potentially before the end of the year. Yeah, let's not get too excited, Rebecca, but the Scottish <laughs> Government's um, National Clinical Director, Jason Leach, said there was some encouraging news with regards to a vaccine. In an interview on BBC Scotland's Drive Time with John Beattie earlier, he said they were expecting, and I'm quoting here, with a fair wind, there would be some doses of vaccine available this side of Christmas. So while the vaccine trials have gone well so far, mm -hmm. still no exact timescale that we could expect. OK, so some, I mean, that doesn't sound like it's the, the whole population is about to get it. Um, who would be in line to get it? Do we know that level of detail? Well, Professor Leach said there would have to be a very cautious approach, as you would expect, because it's still too soon to know if the vaccine is safe for everyone in yeah. the population. So once that research is complete, you might give it to those working in health and social care, for example, no big surprise there, followed by those to consider to be most at risk, maybe because of their age or because of underlying health conditions but you've got to check first that it's safe to use in those populations, of course. And this all comes after the head of the UK Vaccine Task Force, Kate Bingham, told this programme that she was hopeful the most vulnerable could start receiving a vaccine before the year is out. But she did emphasise, you know, this isn't going to be a silver bullet. So I think yeah. some hope, Rebecca, but with a large dose of caution. Yeah, we've got to cling on to that hope, don't we? It's going to be difficult. I think that is the news everyone is, is definitely waiting for. We can say that universally. Katie, thank you very much indeed. Right, there has been precious little... Liam McIver, BBC News. It's really interesting, all of this, isn't it? It is. There's so many unknowns in the next couple of months, uh, isn't and, there? And, and, you know, the government are saying, look, we're not going to make you promises. We're not going to make you a guarantee you can go home for Christmas when we can't absolutely underline that guarantee. Yeah. But how do you keep students in their halls over Christmas? How do you stop them from going home? I'm how sure do you stop that's... their parents from saying, just come on? Yeah, I'm sure that's a, that's a question the Scottish yeah, government is asking as well, isn't it? it? There's a lot more to this in the rules, isn't it? It's, a, very, it's an important very part of the year. All right. Interesting. Well, we will move on just now. You are watching The Nine on a Monday evening. Still to come on the programme tonight. How much... And remember, you can get in touch with us. If you've got a story or you want to have your say, just search BBC Scott Nine. You can see it there on Twitter or on Instagram, or you can hashtag The Nine. We would love to hear from you, wouldn't we, Martin? Wouldn't we just? It's always a joy. Right, now, a steward has told the inquiry into the Manchester Arena bombing that he wasn't suspicious of the bomber, Salman Abedi, despite seeing it. Now, in just over a week's time, we should know whether Donald Trump or Joe Biden has won the US presidential election. Voting is already well underway. More than 60 million Americans have cast their ballot early, breaking all previous records. In a series of special reports from the key state of Arizona, Clive Myrie will be looking at some of the issues preoccupying the voters as they make their choices. He starts this evening with illegal immigration and President Trump's signature promise to build a wall along the border with Mexico. I have done for the last few years. Hmm. And what is just incredible is the fact that Teo was there as Garank Thomas's support yeah. rider. And it was, was because it? Garank Thomas actually, he crashed because he's a water bottle That's got right. stuck under his front wheel and he, he crashed and, and unfortunately he really hurt himself. Mm -hmm. And that's why, really? why Teo yeah. was picked as the leader. And he said he knew it was going well. I thought this was brilliant in an interview. He said he knew it was going well when his team were yelling at him to slow down <laughs> and be careful in the last kilometre. He really? thought, I must have been OK by then when they're telling me to slow down. Do you know what? What I think, though, is so sad for these guys. Like, this is a once-in-a-lifetime moment for him. And, of course, nothing will be taken away. He's, he's got the championship, he's got the medal, that's it, it's on his CV. But you've, he's just won the Giro d'Italia. He should have done it in front of hundreds of thousands of people lining the streets and big adoring crowds, oh. and everything has just been completely yeah. sterilised this year, hasn't it? I know, we hope to see all these people achieving great things in 2020, yes. doing it again when we yes, can in we... front of fans. Good on him. Well <laughs> Thank done to you. him. We'll have him as a Scot, won't we? <laughs> right.
You can still carve a pumpkin and stick on a scary movie, but for little ones especially, Halloween is not going to be the same this year, is it? It certainly isn't. No guising, no parties, but stay tuned because we've got some top advice on keeping the kids entertained shortly. For some businesses, though, it's hard not to be spooked by a socially distant Halloween, as our consumer affairs correspondent Nick Sheridan has been hearing. JC from News. Good so, <laughs> with guising a no-go, what else can parents do to keep wee ones entertained? Well, we have Fiona Simpson, founder of the Big Neighbourhood Pumpkin Trail, uh, with us now with hopefully some spooky suggestions. Fiona, I see your house is already decked out. Are you going to come and save the day for the parents here? I mean, they're not allowed to go out <laughs> trick-or-treating. Is all lost? What are your suggestions? No, absolutely the Big Neighbourhood Pumpkin Trail. So explain a little bit to us about that. I mean, that's obviously going to be happening outside. We know people can't go door to door or really mix with households, exactly. but, but you can take your little ones outside. Yeah, to enjoy this Halloween. It sounds like a fantastic idea. What about if what about people don't want to go outside? What about if they want to stay in their houses? Um, and, and have you got any ideas about kind of, you know, arty, crafty oh. things people can do? Yeah, I mean, there's Can do. Yeah, I, I'm I'm an absolute ray of sunshine, as Rebecca will testify most of the time. <laughs> but I play this kind of curmudgeonly character in the office sometimes. This should be a turnip trail, should know What's it? This has all become incredibly commercialised and incredibly American, isn't it? Pumpkins. <laughs> Now, NASA has revealed conclusive evidence of water on the surface of the moon and said there could be even more of it on the lunar landscape than we'd previously thought. It could pave the way for the space agencies to set up a lunar base by tapping into the moon's natural resources. The BBC's science correspondent, Victoria Gill, explains. Victoria Gill, BBC News. Uh, what do you think? A trip to the moon to stay? That sounds quite well, appealing I'm, right I'm now. I'm quite interested in people going there again in 2024. Yeah. That's quite a big deal because there was a lot of talk about, you know, we've been there once. Why haven't we Why been haven't there we been since back? the 60s? Yeah. Why have we not been back? It's a good well, question. We're about to get, I think, probably a lot more high tech pictures from the moon. Indeed. Uh, in we shall look time. forward to that, won't Very we? Very interesting. <laughs> Now, straight back down to earth now with a splash. <laughs> His nickname is the Flying Fish, and for good reason, because John Bream has set a new world record for jumping out of an aircraft into water without a parachute. Yeah, the former army paratrooper plunged from a helicopter into the English Channel from a height of around 40 metres. Duncan Kennedy has the story. <laughs> I'm glad he went in feet first. Imagine belly flopping from that, that height. Yeah, I'm not sure quite <laughs> what he was thinking, but you want a feeling of exhilaration oh, yeah. coming back up, breathing, and all your bits are still working. <laughs> yeah, and he had help on hand just in case they weren't. Well, what are they going to do if he... <laughs> I mean, you know, they could pull him out, but yeah. yeah. Brave but late man, for safety. For sure. Yeah, exactly. <gasps> right, weather time. Look, and who's Christopher back? Blanchard is here <laughs> in the flesh. What a treat. It is wonderful to see Well, you say treats. You haven't, you haven't heard one. Well, ah, oh, no, you're here. It's good <laughs> enough. Only come with good news. Ray of yes. sunshine. Well, you know, there's something reassuringly reliable about the weather in Scotland in autumn. <laughs> uh, wind and rain yeah. and plenty of that this week, actually. Yeah, pretty unsettled fair to come. Let's take a look at all the details. Thanks, guys. Yeah, good evening to you. It was a day of blustery cast. We'll be keeping a hold on to our umbrellas, I think, Christopher. Yeah, if you can. <laughs> Reliably wet and miserable. There we are. Not you. The, the, the weather in October, as oh, you were pointing you. Oh, out. I you. We Lovely will see you, you soon. Back. Thanks, Christopher. Good to have you back. Now, here is a heartwarming story to leave you with tonight. 80-year-old Paul Harvey is a pianist and composer who was diagnosed with dementia last year. Oh, just amazing. You can see it means the absolute world to him. Absolutely fantastic. It, it's a story. brilliant story. His son, I think, gave him four notes and said, improvise. And, and from memory, he just, he just went like that and, and he did it. You it? said you were watching that story on breakfast this I morning. Was. I was. Might, I might have shed a few uh, tears. Uh, yeah, damp eyes. <laughs> there we are. It's a lovely Lots story. Lots of people, I think, were the same, weren't Yeah, they? good for Paul. Absolutely. Right, that is it from us. What a lovely note to leave you on. We are going to be back, though, at the same time tomorrow evening. Join us then if you can. Thank you very much for watching. Good night.